Hi, it's Andres again. Today we're gonna to do a demo about recognizing human activity using Always AI. Recognizing human activity allows us to do things like analyze players' positions in different sports, something like analyzing someone's golf swing. It allows us to see key points in order to create like immersive augmented reality content for them. And it also allows us to do things like detect when someone's falling over. The way we do this is using a technique called pose estimation. And in this case, we're using a model which returns key points that map to your body um, in different locations. So one point would represent your elbow and another your wrist, another your nose maybe. Always AI makes this really easy. Today we're gonna be making an application that overlays the YMCA letters while I make them in real time. Um, and I'm gonna be showing you how to do that, uh, walking you along the uh, code that I'm using, getting started with our starter apps. So I'm just gonna go ahead and head to my home screen and go ahead and open up a terminal. So I've already installed the Always AI CLI. And so I'm gonna go ahead and now pull our starter apps. And then once I do that, I'm going to open up the starter app in my editor of choice. And specifically I'm referring to the real-time pose estimator starter app. And then I opened up the real-time pose estimator project using my ID. Once I'm in my starter application, and you can see D right into it, I'm gonna go ahead and run this starter app and just see what it produces for me. So I do that by doing an AI app deploy. In this case, I'm running the application on my Linux laptop. And so I actually don't need to deploy to a device. I can just use my local computer as a device for now, which is really useful for me while I'm prototyping. Um, if you have a Mac or Windows machine, uh, you would go ahead and select remote device and then uh, work on your machine and then deploy to your device every time you make a change. So the model we'll be using in this application requires the NCS1 to work. So I'll be using that and plugging it into my laptop. So I'm gonna go ahead and start the application using always AI app start or AI app start. And I'm gonna open up and see what kind of results it gives me. And as you can see, it lines up key points and draws lines in between them. It looks like we have key points for uh, my eyes and my nose, my shoulders. Uh, if I stand up, it'll show you going down to my elbows and wrists. Now that's really important. I think that the way we're gonna build our application is by using the key points for the wrists and elbows along with uh, key points that are uh, we'll use for the head. So right now I'm gonna open up the starter app and take a look at what's making this application run. And as you can see here, it's uh, loading up the model, always AI human pose. It's uh, going ahead and setting the accelerator to the Myriad accelerator, uh, which is the accelerator profile that fits the NCS. I'm using the NCS one. It's loading up the webcam and also the streamer. We just saw the streamer, which is a debug tool that uh, allows you to send video and text from the device and back to your local host. And, you know, importantly, what we see here is that we have our estimator object and we call estimate on a frame and we get a results object back. Now, what I'm really interested in here is this uh, pose.keypoints attribute, which is what we're gonna be using to determine or to create a, a simple algorithm to classify different uh, body positions into what we would determine to be a pose associated with each letter. So like what a Y pose would look like and what a M pose would look like, C pose, A pose. Now, one interesting thing is how do I know which key point is mapped to which body part? In this case, what we're gonna do is go ahead and look at the docs and see what they give us. I'm gonna look under pose estimation and it's gonna give me a handy little table here which shows me which key point in the key point array is associated with each body part. So zero would be nose, neck, right shoulder. We have key points for hip, uh, ankles. But in this application, we're really 
likely going to be focused in the top part, the top half of uh, the body, because those are what's associated with the key points for the poses. So at this point, I just really want to think about how you would create an application. How would you recognize activity based off a model that gives you back key points? And I think the way you can really think about it is what actions you take to make a Y pose, right? Um, I would call these body positions. So we're going to create like essentially a set of functions that represent body positions. And then we're going to put them together to create a uh, pose classification function, right? Something that essentially is uh, a set of things like having your arms over your head or having them straight or uh, you know, to the left of your head, et cetera, to create, to determine whether or not you're in a certain pose. All right, so let's try to define a Y pose. Now, when I think about a Y pose, what I'm doing when I do a Y, when I uh, perform a Y pose is I am lifting my arms overhead, I am moving them outwards, right? And I think what, you know, what separates a Y pose from other poses is that my arms are straight, uh, which means that my wrists are farther outwards than my elbows, right? As opposed to being bent in. I would define a Y pose as if your arms are overhead and if your arms are outwards and if your arms are straight, meaning that, you know, they're essentially out at a 45 degree angle. So if I create a function called is y that essentially uh, returns true if your arms are overhead, outward, and arms are straight, then I think we're in a pretty good place. Yeah, so what we've done here is stub out a few functions, uh, really one function that determines whether or not you're in a y pose based on the output of this model and the result object that we give you back from Edge IQ. So in this case, what I'm trying to do is fill out this uh, body position function. So I want to create a function that gives me back true when the key points determine that arms are over the person's head. In this case, what I'll be doing, and for the rest of the video, is I, I'm going to be using the nose as a proxy for the person's head. It's you know pretty central on their face. And what I'm going to define arms over head is here is essentially when your elbows and your wrists are over your nose, then that's going to define that your arms are over your head. Arms outward would be essentially that uh, your arms are further left or right than the center point, a central point in your body. In this case, what I'm going to do is use the X dimension of the nose key point as well. All right, so I think arm straight is really the hardest one to define here. Uh, the way I defined arm straight was to use the elbow and wrist key points again. And for my purposes, your arms are straight, so they're already up, upwards and they're already outwards, right? And your arms are straight when your wrists are farther out in, uh, than your elbows and also farther overhead than your elbows, right? And so in that case, basically, you're making sure they're not bent in, right? They are out farther than your elbows and they're not uh, below your elbows. And that should define essentially what would be a Y pose all put together. So what I've noticed is that I've been using the wrists and the elbows and the nose uh, key points for this function. Um, I think those are gonna be the major key points that we're gonna be using throughout this process. Um, there might be some more, but what I'm gonna do is create a convenience class that allows me to extract the key points associated with those body parts and uh, call them out using names like nose Y or nose X or right wrist Y or right elbow Y. I mentioned it before that like, oh, you gotta go to the docs to get the body part map, right? So essentially right now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use that body part map to extract the key points that I want into a different object so I can use it more easily in my application. So now we're gonna test our function in the starter application. And I'm gonna do that by adding it to my uh, the while loop down here, uh, and what I'm going to do is uh, pass in the pose to my y, is y function and just print out y pose recognized uh, if it detects a y pose. So I'm going to go ahead and try this out. I'm going to use AI app start to start the application. 
If you're not running locally, you have to deploy before you run AAF start. But if you're running locally, you can just run AAF start and your changes will be recognized right away. And see if it recognizes the Y pose like we've predicted. There we go. Perfect. If we apply that same kind of logic for creating the other poses, then I was able to build a full application that identifies whether or not someone is doing different poses in the YMCA. So there's one fun example about how you can utilize pose estimation using Always AI. If you want the code, please click the link down below. If you're interested in creating your own computer vision apps, sign up at Always AI.